dear ladies and gentlemen, my name is Robert Yotka, and I'm very glad to be able to welcome you again to our Energy Forum 2021, which this year is, is an online event, a uh, YouTube channel and, and streaming service, as well as a, as a cluster of presentations and the topics and discussions on YouTube in connection to energy and topics that are of interest in the energy area. Uh, obviously, this event is being organized by Estonian Chamber of Commerce in Lithuania, Polish Chamber of Commerce in Lithuania, Primus Law Firm, and uh, is very generously helped by uh, Estonian Embassy, Polish Embassy, Finnish Embassy, as well as other sponsors. And today we are going to talk about uh, circular economy. Well, uh, many of you have heard a lot about circular economy already. Uh, it's a hot topic these days. Uh, there are numerous discussions how it should be improved, how it should be made better, what are the challenges and issues in connection to it, uh, and uh, what what uh, impact does uh, circular economy or, or circular waste management and other other measures in connection to it uh, do on our on our environment, on our energy sector, on our uh, economic growth, and all, all these related questions. And today we will have a Finnish perspective of these issues. And uh, we have a distinguished uh, speaker, Ms. Stuli Nulima, who is uh, head of uh, unit uh, MS Tech of Waste and Circle Economy Group and leader of the Circle Waste Consortium at the Finnish Institute of Environment, Suke. Uh, so uh, Tuli will tell us about circle and economy and, and all matters related to it and experience of it in Finland. And also a few words about Tuli herself. Tuli Mulima is working in the Finnish Environment Institute, which is a multidisciplinary environmental research and expert institute. She is working as a head of the Waste and Circular Economy Unit and leading the Circ Waste project. In the Circ Waste, over 20 partners and 10 foreign municipalities are mainstreaming the circular economy in Finland and are also implementing the National Waste Plan to reduce the use of natural resources and to support systemic change. It will continue until the end of 2023 and is financed by the European Union Life IP program. So without further ado, Tuli, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Robert. And it's uh, very good and nice to be here. And great to have the opportunity to tell you about our project. And uh, so, as already mentioned, um, we are having uh, this Cirque Waste project uh, and uh, hopefully you can now see the screen of, of our, our yes, nice good. mandala and all the colors that have been <laughs> created for our project. So, so the Cirque Waste, um, the project is about towards circular economy in Finland. And uh, we have started in 2016, and we will continue until the end of 2023. And um, the project is designed to assist in making the system level change in Finland towards more circular economy and also for achieving the waste targets. And about circular economy, as already mentioned, it is a hot topic today and uh, it has been already for several years and originally the circular economy is a model of economy it was set by U EU commission and um, uh, in in circular economy they uh, have created those targets that are the efficiency of using natural resources uh, is increased the value of materials is sustained and the value added is efficiently created from services and also the dependence of economy from natural resources is decreased. So there are several targets, but uh, these are also a little bit familiar already because this is a, a common, common strategy. But then some more about this circular economy. And um, I'm saying that um, circular economy is an efficient way of promoting also sustainability. Sustainability has the aspects of human um, welfare and uh, also the resources use and the economic views. And uh, if the circular economy is used right, 
with the circular economy, we can restrain the use of natural resources, we can also restrain the climate impacts and the biodiversity loss and the dependence of economy from natural resources. But all this must be done so that it will gain the uh, social acceptance. So if it's not okay for us, if, the, if we might, must um, make um, solutions or we have to uh, be in a situation, we have to um, give up something that's important for us, uh, it will not have the general acceptance. And that's why the human well-being must be controlled all the way through and then um, kind of um, have a clear vision if, if there is an impact somewhere that will decrease the social welfare, there must be something to be done to, to kind of finding the balance so that uh, all those necessary actions can be done because we must do very big actions, we must do very big changes. So the human well-being, it includes health and experienced fairness. So it must be felt that those uh, targets and those actions that are being done, they are fair for everybody. Then the economic activity, it's typically measured by employment and also GDP. And then the resources use, in that uh, resources use, um, the keywords are sufficiency. We must use the natural resources so that we know that they will there will be enough resources in the future to come to. But then the supply disruptivity aspect. That means that um, we should have a closed loop and as near as possible so that we can be sure that when we are producing materials or producing products that there will be enough natural resources available and raw materials available, and they are not from, from crisis or there are no um, uh, critical, uh, critical um, things that is happening for those that are working for those, uh, for example, mining uh, and producing those raw materials. And then the biodiversity. There is a clear connection between the resources use and biodiversity. If we are taking sand and gravel and we are using land, we will then uh, we will then lose the biodiversity. We will lose nature. So decreasing the use of natural resources will also solve the biodiversity loss problems. So they are going to the same direction. Then. Something a little bit more about the Cirque Waste, as uh, Robert already mentioned, uh, this is a huge, a huge project with over 20 partners, and um, we are making very big job to in in different themes and different different projects. And um, because we need big changes, it means that we are needing very many ways to support the change. Uh, we are we are having and we are needing the system level change and that's why we are needing very large cooperation and in um, because of we have those 20 partners we are in strong strong level but um, we need also other cooperation and municipalities are a very important partner for us we are having a Foreign, foreigner municipalities network, and it will um, it it, uh, it includes ten foreigner municipalities, and this is a very important cooperation network for us. So um, Finnish Environment Institute is a coordinator in that project, and our key role is communicating the project and project results and uh, communicating the best practices that has been found and networking activation and committing into the common targets. And that's why uh, this situation is very, very uh, good for us to, we want to be heard and we want to tell what, what have we learned during this journey, during this project. But um, uh, because we are a 
Research Institute. We also have very, very strong role for analyzing these results and analyzing the trends where we are going and to measure what the change has, has been during these years and what will come later. These are the partners. As you can see, we have institutes, we have universities, we have municipalities, we have regions, and we have also companies and public enterprises. So a very large, large uh, uh, partner group there behind this, this job. Then about uh, those trends, I mentioned that uh, our job is to analyze and measure. And uh, let's have a look, where are we now? This is uh, about Finland. These are the trends of the total material requirement and domestic material consumption, and also the GDP and municipal solid waste and G GHG emissions, greenhouse gas emissions. And um, in, a, in a circular economy, there wouldn't be any um, dependence between the GDP and the material use if everything is well. So there would be more economic development than the use of material resources. And now we can see that uh, the natural resources use is dependent on the economic growth in Finland. So you can see the trends are quite, quite similar and going in the same direction. So we have still jobs to do. Um, the uh, correlation isn't that obvious in the greenhouse gas emissions. As you can see, the job that has been done to uh, decrease the greenhouse gas emissions, it has been very, very well working, but still we know that that isn't enough. So we have to work in, in each sector to go further and have more, more good solutions and more change. Uh, dear Tuli, uh, yeah. I want to interrupt you for a while because we have a question from the audience. Yeah, great. Uh, and the first question is about the partners you have. So how do you integrate the partners and stakeholders? How do you encourage for participation and cooperation between them? Yes, very good question. We try to be in contact with each, uh, each of these partners. We have a common get-togethers. And well, as you know, and in these recent months and years, we have been in teams very much. Uh, so one way is to, well, get together and uh, discuss on these things. But then we have regional uh, cooperation groups in, in key areas in Finland. And we are in very, um, uh, we are in contact with those regions very often. Uh, about once a month, maybe, and we try to get the latest information, what's happening in the regions, what are the projects they're going on, and they will tell us um, what are the signals there, and then we will tell them what's happening and what, what kind of, well, analysis has been done and what's the signals from our point of view. But it's, it's discussing and then we have to report to the EU very regularly. So it makes it well work together. But always there could be more interaction and more communication and more discussion. And this uh, current situation, it hasn't been easy for us because meeting people is as you know, it's um, more stronger and more effective than, than just the virtual things. But it's a good question because the communication and the cooperation is a key, key when, when doing something together and aiming for big, big, um, uh, big results. Yeah. Thank you. And there is also another question, but I guess I will ask it later because it's essentially about your presentation in full. So please continue. Yes, thanks. So uh, the next picture is about municipal waste. I wanted to show you what's the 
current situation in Finland about treating the municipal waste. So as you can see, the green lines there, there is the recycling. So it has been rising uh, and we are now in the level of about 40 and a little bit more percentage. So there could be and should be more recycling in Finland. That's the fact. But uh, we are going in the right direction, but there is job left to do because the targets are in 2035, they are up to 65%. So um, there is ideas, new actions and markets needed. And that's, we are trying to, uh, well, work that out in, in our project to, to help the change. And then you can see there is one good, good uh, news and that's the amount of landfilling or the small amount of landfilling. So we have the landfill ban, that is meaning that if the material is recyclable, you can't landfill it. And that has been very effective. We have had more and more energy use for those materials that can be recycled. And uh, in Finland, the um, uh, waste that has been used as energy, it's, it's producing both heat and electricity because we need that much heating energy during the during the year and but truly you know in, in connection to that to energy you know from from waste uh, essentially it's again a big topic all around uh, the region yeah. here but uh, especially in Lithuania the, the discussion usually rages on the fact that there is not enough of waste available to burn it you know to so sustain you know practical operation of, of of waste incineration, electricity plants. What is the situation in Finland in that regard? Well, at the moment in Finland, um, uh, we we have that much incineration capacity that uh, we are also we are also exporting some waste materials to other countries. So um, I think there is one more facility in construction at the moment. And after that, maybe we are more self-sufficient in that waste incineration. But of course, in the future, we hope that there is less and less waste to be burned. So uh, that's the situation now, but uh, we are in that level at, after a, a short while, we don't need maybe uh, incineration capacity from other countries anymore. Okay. Yes. Yeah, but uh, that's about municipal waste. And uh, then I wanted to uh, show you the idea how the energy sector and the circular economy, I think they are going, uh, going to the same direction. So in restraining the dependence of economy from natural resources, sustainable energy sources, are an important part of the solution. So when we are using wind and solar energy, hydrogen power and geothermal energy, etc., we can save the use of other uh, raw materials and natural resources. And that's why the sustainable energy sources, they are also promoting the circular economy. There is a clear connection. And when we are not using fossil energy sources, then we also save, save land and biodiversity. The more materials we use, the more we have to take the biodiversity and other aspects of nature. And that's why the wind and solar and all the, all the new technologies to come are very important. Yeah. Then I wanted to show you some of, pi of those pilots that are being, um, in operation in our project at the moment. Four of them have a quite clear connection to the energy sector and that's why I picked these four ones. And the first is in, uh, in central Finland where they are developing waste logistics and uh, they are supporting for enlarging biogas vehicle fuel network there and also uh, trying to make more and more biogas from bio waste. And um, they have had very good results there. There are more and more uh, biogas networks available and also garbage trucks are, are, are operating with biogas there. So that's one, one that is, uh, have the connection to the energy sector and replacing the 
fossil energy sources. But then the second one, uh, and this is uh, developing biogas production and promoting farm scale biogas plants. So um, there are two partners. The other one is Turku University of Applied Sciences. They are uh, educating farmers so that they could have um, farm scale biogas plants to replace the, the fossil energy. And, and then the other partner, Natural Resources Institute Finland, um, it is testing biogas production from manures and other organic products to make as much biogas than possible. And they have been that kind of research for some years in, in, this, in this project. So all these have connections to the energy sector too. Then the third one, this is a little bit smaller scale example. This is about consumer activ activation and it's about bio waste recycling and um, which is more important to avoiding food waste and bio waste. And uh, actually this week is um, a theme week for avoiding food food waste. So this is a very good example in that sense too. So they have organized communication and waiting campaigns in the city of Pori. And um, they have done cooperation with schools and, and uh, that has been quite effective. Sometimes the little things lead to bigger things. And this is one of those. When you measure, you can then uh, see what are the amounts and how much is is then going to the waste. And this is very good concrete actions that, and good work that is done, done in Bori. Then the fourth one, this is about logistic and um, preventing product losses and unnecessary transportation. This is the theme that is connecting these two partners. The other one is city of Uvascula and uh, they are improving source separation and recycling of waste. And they have done it by installing a smart um, waste collection system. So um, it's a uh, uh, family can measure how much they are producing waste. And these data from that whole house, which is having this system, they can, they can see from the internet what are the amounts all the time. So this is based on the fact that if you see what this the amounts, you it will affect how you how you act. So uh, that's something that has been testing there. And then the other one is quite a different one. Uh, it's by GS1 Finland, and they have they have developed a digital and mobile cloud service tool, and uh, it's for preventing uh, losses and. Uh, during this COVID time, it has been probably been quite a success because nowadays it's very important to know what's in the storage and how to get those products as soon as possible to the customers. So they have been doing this job in Zerg Waste. They have already actually finished their job for some years ago, but the project and uh, sorry, the product is still available. Yes, but these are the four examples that has the clearest connection to the to the uh, natural resources use and connected uh, to the energy sector. Then I thought I could uh, mention shortly about analyzing the results. So that's the one of the key jobs that we have here in Finnish Environment Institute. And the fact is, uh, if you don't measure it, you can't improve it. And if you don't measure, you can't e even lead. So we must know quite much where we are going to understand what to do to go where we want. And uh, because, as I mentioned, the circular economy has all the aspects of sustain sustainability. So it's very complicated strategy. So there is no single one indicator that would describe what is the circular economy and where we are now. We need several indicators. And we have been developing those indicators in our project. And we have produced all the data publicly available and you can find it in our web pages. And there are some examples on the indicators here. And we have uh, from the 
waste sector, we have household waste and recycling rate, and we have also produced new data from municipal level. So regional level is the new thing that we have here. It, these values are typically for nationwide, but we have produced and done very quite much job to do that regionally. But uh, this is very good for municipalities for planning their jobs, where to go, what are the measures to be done in the future when they see what's the situation regionally. Well, then this was the waste part. Then we have tried to measure the economic part. So regional turnover from circular economy businesses is one of those uh, indicators and we have done also very good cooperation with the statistics Finland which has also created very many indicators that are giving understand understand uh, well we try to understand what is the circular economy business um, in, in total and they have created several indicators for that and then uh, we are also measuring the regional activity uh, the amount of projects and uh, then uh, regional waste amounts per person and GDP and then we have social indicators and uh, these are very interesting ones, ones actually and we have several ones but I have mentioned here one because I have some maps on those indicators in the next slide but the social indicators um, we have tried to um, well we are trying to measure something uh, that uh, figures uh, or describes how the people behave or in that case um, what are the possibilities to behave and uh, create a sustainable living and that's why we have here the gas and electric vehicles network in, in our picture so this is the first one here in the left side is the accessibility of fuel stations for gas vehicles as the length of drive so you can see the more blue the longer distance for the car to access that uh, fuel station and the other one is for electric cars and and you can see that there is a clear difference there is quite much more um, network available for electric cars because it's quite much easier to establish electric car station and I think the situation uh, is probably changed quite a bit from these values these are I think last year that we have updated this because the well the in, it's a general interest of having these electric cars in Finland and very big part of new cars are electric cars so I suppose the um, charging points are also growing all the time. But uh, there is um, different um, possibilities in different regions for choosing the sustainable energy source for vehicles. That's something we wanted to show that, that um, there is difference. And of course, because we are a very big country and there is a, a very, very big differences how many people are living in, in the area. Yes, that was about it. I'm happily answering any questions that will be coming and I thank you for your interest and I also have here some uh, information links if you want to know something more our project, but I thank you for this possibility to tell about our project. Yeah, maybe. Thank you very much. And uh, I would also then ask the question from our audience, uh, which would essentially sum up you know, uh, what, what you have just presented. It's essentially a, a short re repeating of, of, of your presentation. Is The question sounds, what are the expected benefits of circ waste project in practical terms from the perspective of business and municipality? Uh, so benefits from business and for municipalities, was it so? Yes, yes. I think uh, the benefits for business, I think we, well, we try to create markets for recycled materials and uh, the way we are trying to do is to, it, it is to make it such a familiar thing for everybody that, 
that these uh, recycled materials are a good thing, that it feels more convenient to choose those products that are including the recycled materials. And uh, through this municipality network, we are, um, well, we are trying to get the best practices um, from those municipalities. They have created so much good work that we, we have been learning a, a lot during this project. But it's uh, very important that other municipalities find the best solutions to and take them and use the same same things and municipalities can act as uh, examples they are they can create new business when they are choosing the better ones and more more innovative uh, technologies when they are having having those when they are creating new facilities or uh, when they are doing the public procurements they can choose the better one and create business. And for municipalities, we have served um, hopefully good information and good cooperation and created network and uh, networks and they can also find each other. And we have uh, created the web pages where to find more information. Um, I think these are the main things I, I figure out. So essentially creation of networks and creation of markets, if you like, essentially. Yes, exactly. And another question from the audience. What challenges, obstacles do you face in the course of the project? What are the difficulties you face? Mm, the difficulties, yeah. Um, I think um, it was more challenging to measure the circular economy than we thought. And it's more challenging to create regional da data than we thought. We thought that uh, now that we know that we need more municipal level data and regional data, we just produce it. But because there is no database where to take that data from, it has been very large job to create the regional data. So that was... Uh, a little bit surprising us, but we know that we are doing very important job because now everybody can use that same data and in the future, probably and hopefully the new databases and new reporting instruments, hopefully have more regional data available because now we have made it clear that there is something missing and this, this would be important. So essentially missing of data or, uh, or measuring of, of, of the outputs, this is the, this is the biggest challenge that we have. Yeah. Very good. Uh, well, uh, talking about, about your project, you know, what do you consider, uh, what are the next steps, you know, main expectations from the following years to come in your project? Yes, we, we really hope that uh, uh, after this project, there will be left some networks and uh, and cooperation that will continue even though this project is over so um, during this uh, last two years we try to create something that will last and we will also uh, focus on reuse and uh, uh, those preventing waste that kind of that kind of targets but also uh, disseminating all the results and analysis and and we are also trying to uh, be in contact with all those circular economy related projects so that we get the last information from from there so that we can give room for the very recent and most innovative um, information that is available okay and uh, generally how does the uh, let's say society, government, you know, all the stakeholders perceive your project. You know, uh, has there been more support or more reluctance? You know, more cautiousness. What's your experience? I think uh, everybody seems to be interested in in these in these issues, and uh, it has been easy to have the cooperation and uh, it has been easy for example um, find uh, speakers to our uh, seminars and uh, 
uh, of course um, when uh, when you have to make some changes to legislation or or big issues it takes time but um, i think um, uh, the atmosphere has been very good we have tried to use uh, the tools that are positive we we try to make this kind of good things and uh, do the things so that um, you know in a way in the positive things are those that will live and we concentrate on those and uh, um, from uh, we concentrate also to solutions and uh, giving those solutions and not not concentrating on the problems and it has been easier for us and it, it, it has been very very interesting and uh, very nice work that we have been been, been doing do, during these years so oh, concentrating on solutions rather than problems so that's a very good approach i would say which is of course easier to say than to do yeah. in practice <laughs> but uh, but another question from the audience is there a room for international cooperation uh, meaning scaling up of the solutions internationally yes we hope that we can um, in the in these coming two years more efficiently uh, well disseminate those uh, international messages to we have the best practices database that kind of a database where we have collected all the good examples. They are from municipalities and they are representing also the businesses and uh, hopefully uh, in, in other countries they can find the Finnish companies and find out that they are doing very good things. And uh, then we hope that somebody will copy those uh, actions that have been done in the municipalities and um, we could do more uh, interaction with with partners in other europe that's something we try to find out during these uh, next years that what would be the most efficient way to do that it, it, it could be always it could be more interaction with, with other countries too and networking and and changing information but which countries have you been working most on international level? I don't know, in the region, Sweden, I don't know, Estonia, Ukraine, Latvia? Uh, I think uh, at the moment uh, we are, uh, well, uh, there aren't very many same kind of projects going on in, in, in the U EU, but uh, there is just one launched. And uh, I think we will have more cooperation with Denmark because of that in the future. Um, uh, so far, we have been connected to, to some countries, but more uh, or less because of some project that has been going on there. And we want, wanted some cooperation and uh, showing the results what they are having. And one good example of um, where, where we want to make it more visible, this uh, international part, is that we are having um, a boosting circular economy event. Uh, in the, it's at the end of September, the last day. Uh, and um, there we will have presentations from Sweden, from Netherlands, from Russia, from Greece, Denmark and Austria. Uh, Australia, sorry. And they will uh, they will tell the latest um, discussions and latest results from their country related to circular economy. And uh, everybody are very warmly welcome to that uh, event. And I can somehow uh, give the um, link to that um, event also if it's possible. But it can be found on our web pages. It's boosting circular economy. And it's 13th, um, 13th uh, September. Yes, it's a day when it's arranged in teams. Okay, 30th, 3 0, 3 0 September. Yes, yeah. last day of September. Very good. So, so I guess, I guess uh, we, we can share that through our channels as well. Right. So, uh, thank you very much, Julie. And uh, indeed, thank it you. has been an interesting uh, and you know, revealing. 
experience to, to learn about your project and, and uh, what, what has been done in Finland in, in connection to the circular economy. I'm sure that you will succeed in, in your endeavors and, and you know the, the part of waste that is wasted will, will, will be close to zero you know, in, in the coming years. Absolutely. And with that, with that, I would like to thank you very much. And uh, uh, also I would like to thank our viewers. And our next speaker will be in a week, as usual. Uh, the name and, and topic will be announced at our webpage, uh, www.energyforum.lt. And we are warmly, warmly welcoming you all to our continued Energy Forum 2021. Uh, please stay with, with us. All the best. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.